So for Christmas this year, we decided to make aluminum cast nameplates for our extended family. So the first step in this uh, process was to 3D print some letters uh, to make the nameplates with. So here's a, a quick video on how we made the nameplates, uh, everything from printing them out on the 3D printer to uh, making the pattern to make the casting with. Uh, to doing the actual aluminum pouring. This is going to be a two-part video. So the first part is making the pattern and then uh, doing the actual pour for the aluminum. The second part video uh, will be uh, cleaning up the uh, cast aluminum uh, and then powder coating it and then sanding it and finishing it uh, and getting it ready. So follow me along as I fast forward through a bunch of work and you can see how we made an aluminum cast nameplates.
So this is the furnace that I use to melt the aluminum. I thought I'd take a quick second to uh, give you a rundown on how I made this. Obviously it was a beer keg before in its former life. I bought the beer keg at a garage sale for 20 bucks and then I put in the ceramic insulation on the inside uh, on the side walls and the bottom and of course on the lid. And then uh, covered that ceramic insulation uh, with satanite, uh, which is like a little mud that uh, holds the heat. Um, just uses the regular propane, got a small little burner there. Uh, I bought the propane uh, burner from eBay, cost about $100, but really you can probably make them yourself for about 30 bucks, uh, but I wasn't too familiar with how to do it, so I went ahead and bought one. Uh, my crucible is just a square tube uh, that's been welded closed on the bottom. I find that this is better than the graphite crucibles. Uh, when using the graphite crucible, it takes about 45 minutes to melt the aluminum. Uh, doing it this way uh, with the steel crucible, uh, it only takes about 15 minutes to melt the aluminum. So, 15 minutes, I'll pull it out and we'll do our first pour. So when I pulled this pattern out of the mold, you can see on there where the sand stuck in the R, the A, and the R over here. And so when we, uh, we went ahead and did the casting anyway, so what I'll have to do is mill that out on the milling machine, see if I can make that look pretty good. 
and uh, we'll see what happens. So this is the end result of the casting. And if you can see, the R, uh, the sand f was missing from the R. Uh, so that filled in, and a little bit right there underneath. Same thing on the A, and same thing on this R right here. So I'm gonna use the milling machine and mill those out, see if I can't clean that up. The rest of it looked pretty good. Uh, on the back I have to cut off the spruce um, and then that one will be good to go. On the killing one, you can see along the edges, they're not very crisp and clean. And so I'm going to run the milling machine down through those edges and see if we can't get that cleaned up. The letters turned out just fine, but the, uh, let's see if we can smooth up the, the edges some. And then of course we need to cut the sprues off the back of these as well. So that's what we have so far. So uh, the next step will be milling them and cleaning them up and then we'll powder coat them and go from there.